Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Design to Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel, the home of the granny square with some knitting and sewing thrown in for good measure too. I hope that you are all well wherever you are, that you're safe, you're well, that you've been fed, that you've stayed warm or cool if you're in the middle of summer somewhere and that you've had plenty of time with your hook. So if you're brand new, hi, hello, and welcome to the channel. And if you're returning, hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? I've got a lot of Granny Square action <laughs> in this. Like, wow, Granny Square, Granny Square, Granny Square, plus over there. This is my June in review. So every month I sit down and I have a chat with you and I talk about everything that I have been crocheting, knitting, making, and all the bits in my life, such as my garden, and yeah, all that good stuff. And it's already time for June. Wow. It feels like I only just recorded the May one, and when I did record the May one, um, the, the big topic of conversation at the time was anti-racism. George Floyd had been murdered, I think he was murdered the 26th of May, and I recorded on the 31st of May. And so I actually postponed um, allowing my video to be public until I had given enough chance for people to hear um, my Enough is Enough video and if you haven't watched that please go back and watch that. Um, that was a message that I recorded. Um, I just wanted to add my voice and just to say that what's happening, the murders, taking black lives is, is not acceptable. Why is it happening? and also just urging people to go and educate themselves. I've educated myself quite a bit since and I still have so much more to do. Um, just learning the history of slavery, of racism, of there's just, there's so much learning. And so I recorded that vlog. I put it up a bit later, hoping that you've all watched Enough is Enough. I'll link it up above if you haven't. Um, and then out came May 2020 and all of a sudden, I think that then left a gap of maybe two or three and a bit weeks and now we're at the end of June. Wow. Um, and if you've watched my May in review, you'll know that I made a ridiculous amount of granny squares that month. I can't even remember how many it was now. I'll flash it on the screen for you. Um, and yeah, June zoomed by. So I'm going to talk about my patterns my finished objects, my whips, my new acquisitions, because there's been new acquisitions and also my garden and other bits and pieces. So get yourself a drink, make sure you've got your project ready and let's dive in. Oh. Okay, my patterns. I'm so excited about my patterns at the moment. So this is one of my patterns. This is called Revival. I've just released the name. <laughs> this is my first pattern to reach the world and it's a granny square jumper and I love it. Um, it's a boxy crop. I'm gonna stand up but also put some footage in so you can see me wearing it, doing my thing. So it comes to my belly buttons here skims my belly button, I've got high-waisted jeans on. This is a rib that I've done with, um, it's all crocheted. And then the cuffs are rib. I've got the simple double crochet or single crochet for the arms. And then the body is made up of a panel of granny squares. And then it's got a cowl neck to make it snuggly. Um, the pattern is here, Revival. I love it, I love it, I love it, I'm so, proud of this. It's taken quite a lot of learning, redoing and help from so many people to get to this point. Um, I just wanted to show you the front cover and then the second page. And I took these pictures in the Bluebell Wood near my house and oh I love it, I love it, I love it. They were in season at the time so it was perfect. Um, I'm going to read the about section to you. So, Revival is a con contemporary cropped jumper using the classic granny square. 
The jumper is formed of a front and back panel, sleeves made in the round, a slouchy cowl and ribbing crocheted in rows to finish. Revival means, and it's a noun, the process of becoming more active or popular again, new production of an old work and an awakening. A revival is a nod to all of those making inroads to, sus to sustainability, conscious fashion, the revival of crochet and a place for the granny garment in the creative community. And I have filled this pattern with pictures throughout. I'll show you this one as well. The skill level is intermediate. It uses double knit yarn and I've given the instructions in English crochet and American crochet because we've got those differences. Um, the sizing, I wanted this to be inclusive. No matter what shape of human, you can wear this pattern. And so it goes from extra small to 5XL. So that is a 28 to 30 inch bust all the way up to a 60 to 62 inch bust or for all of those that use centimetres, 71 to 76 centimetres all the way up to 152 to 158 centimetres. Um, I use, as I said, I used mainly, mainly I used all double knit yarn and it's a mixture of scraps, which is, I think, some style craft and whatever was in my whip bin and my stash bin. And then the joining colour was um, yarn from Audi, which is a supermarket here that sells yarn. Um, and all of the details are here. So this pattern is currently being tested. I put a shout out for testers um, maybe Wednesday. And today's Sunday and I filled all of the slots but I still need two for the 5XL, one for the 4XL and um, one for the 3XL I think. So 3XL is 52 to 54 inch which is 132 to 137 centimeters. 4XL is 56 inch to 58 inch or 142 to 147 centimeters and the 5XL is 60 to 62 inches which is 152 to 158 centimeters um, and that is your chest measurement and as long as your chest measurements is within one of the one of the size guidelines then this jumper will fit you. It's got 8 inch positive ease so if I stand up can you see that? That is called positive ease. It means it's bigger than your chest measurement. So it will, the finished size has eight inches on what your chest measurement is. Um, so if anybody has those chest measurements and they are willing to test this for me, would you please either comment below or if you can message me on Instagram or email, I'll put my email below. Um, I just need to fill those slots. Like I'm really, really, really looking for a 5XL. Um, so I wanna make sure all of the sizes are covered. If I don't manage to find one, then when I release it, I will put in the release notes that it hasn't been tested and that if anybody that size wants to test it for me, let me know and I'll send the pattern to you. Um, because I wanna make sure that it works for all sizes. I know my size works because I can wear this, but I want somebody with the different body shapes to check as well to make sure it all works for y'all um i really hope it does <laughs> i know it will and even if there's a little thing that needs tweaking i'll sort it out um you can follow the test knitters on instagram they're using the hashtags crocheting revival and hddc granny Garms. and there's already i think two have already put up um, the body panels and it's really cool to see the different colours that people are using and also you're so speedy so so speedy um, yeah <laughs> it's really 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 cool to see it coming through but then I'm also like oh it's my pattern um, like an equal parts nervous excited amazed in shock so much um, so every time a, any feedback comes through from my testers, I'm updating it in here, um, which is why it's looking a bit dog-eared and I've got writing all on the back. It's happening! 
I'm hoping to release this pattern the second week of August for sale. It's going to be for sale on Etsy and Love Crafts. I will put it on Ravelry once Ravelry has sorted out their accessibility issues because unfortunately due to the way they've released it they've caused seizures for eight different people and it's not acceptable. Let's make it so that everybody in the community is safe to use the platform and can access it. I'd hate to think somebody goes to download my pattern and then has a seizure because of it. So I'm going to make sure that it's available on Etsy and Lovecrafts and I'm looking for other platforms as well. So if there's any that you use for other designers or if you're a designer and you use it, let me know. I'd like to have my own website, but that's got costs and experience hurdles that I need to maneuver around. Working on it, but in the interim, any other platforms, let me know. Um, I usually also, well, not usually, I do, I will, anyone that is a Patreon, a tribe star of HDDC, they get a free download code for the pattern. Um, and so I am going to find a platform where you can download that as well, or if I have to, I will email it to everybody individually until I can sort out something that is safe and usable for all. So hopefully my patterns come in August. I'm not gonna say the day in case I change it, but the second week of August, mid-August, this pattern will be available. Um, the test knit deadline is August the 1st. So if anybody can test the sizes for me that I've asked for, then please let me know. So that's my first pattern, Revival. I'm loving this. I've spent hours like say the design pops into my head and it takes me 10 minutes to note it down and get a rough idea of what I want to do it then takes me at least three or so hours to grade it if not longer and then well for this first one it took a long time because it was the first one and you're learning everything all at once since then I've graded a couple of others and it was about three hours and then you need to make it and I, I guesstimate that it probably took me, I think each square took me 15 minutes. I did record that, measured my time. Um, I think it took me no more than about 20 hours to put this all together, but there was some frogging because I changed my grading, but that won't happen to y'all. And um, but in terms of writing up the pattern, I easily spent like 40 hours. I eclipsed all the time in making, grading everything in writing this up, proofreading it, making it pretty, um, yeah. I want to do a shout out to Brad for taking the pictures for me. I love you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's amazing to have someone support my passion and like I said to him I need some photos. Look at the photography skills. Yes. <laughs> um, and then also to my tech editor, Tamara, for all of your help because I have, it got to a point where I was like, I don't understand, please can you just fix it? And she did it all and I just, I can't thank everybody enough for the input and the knowledge and for all of those that I've DM'd and just said, can you help me with X, Y, and Z? Just for sharing those little bits of information, thank you. Um, so whilst we're on my patterns, I've got a few more to show you um, and again I'm going to put footage in of me doing my thing um, because I worked on in this month writing up the pattern for Promise and that's here buried under no end of stuff. Now I say it's finished, I think I even weaved all the ends in. Oops. Whereas on Revival So Promise is a granny square dress, yeah, it is a jumper dress, um, again using double knit, it uses, I think this uses a 4.5mm hook, I think this uses a 4mm, I was speaking to Shardine, one of my tribe stars about this because I couldn't quite remember and she'd gone back to watch my vlog for me and said it was a 4mm so thank you and 
I keep saying I write it down in my journal and then that's more me saying I need to write it down in my journal and then I don't. So thank you for checking that. Um, and I used some pound shop yarn which is glitter acrylic to make this and I made it and I actually wore it out but I'd, I hadn't graded it and then once I graded this the very next morning of submitting this to Tamara to be tech edited I graded this and realised I'd made a size too big for myself so I took something like 30 or 40 squares out of it in length and width and it's now finished and the pattern is in various it's almost written up but it definitely needs a chunk of work still but it's graded and so this is the next one and I'm hoping to release this maybe end of September um, so I'm gonna get this submitted to be tech edited ASAP Oof, just knock myself out with granny squares um, I've already got testers lined up that's the great thing some people reached out for this but their size was taken and so I gave them dibs to either test this or the next pattern I'm going to show you so if there is anyone out there that thinks I would like to test always let me know I now have kept see I'm all professional now I've kept a list of notes in my phone of people that said that they would test on what size so that's great um so this is my jumper dress called promise you haven't seen me do anything on it but I assure you in the background I've done quite a bit on that and also my third out of four patterns I'm working on this month, June, is this. Now last month I made a huge amount of these granny squares for a project but I wasn't ready to share the project kind of because I wanted to try it out and see if it worked before I said to the world at large I'm making it and the first part works I made all of those squares I think it was 166 or something because I want to make a matching set a co-ord set um, a twin set I don't know what the what you would call it but I'm calling it a co-ord co hyphen ORD coordinating set um, I want to make a jumper a granny square jumper and a granny square skirt so I churned out all of those squares and I put my skirt together in like one or two days flat and it's here to show you and I'm also gonna put footage in of me wearing it um, so this is my victory set now my tribe stars helped me pick the names and this was either going to be called victory or revival um i think the majority decided on revival and so i kept victory and this is the victory set so it is a granny square skirt with an elastic and elastic waistband and i simply blank blank lit blanket stitched onto it now it's got ends on the waistband because I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put more stitches around here I've done them half an inch apart and I'm going to do them a quarter inch apart so that there's um, a bit more stability other than that I'm really happy with it and I've done it in such a way that on the front it all looks neat but on the back it's got extra granny squares made in to give that extra space for your bumper for your bum and your hips but I wanted it to look really uniform on the front so this is the victory set it's got oh, I love it and wait till you see it on probably seeing it on now oh my goodness um it was in my mind and I was like I don't know how it's going to work because the squares are very rigid how am I going to get the extra in and then I just sat and worked on it and it was so easy to put together so so easy and then I'm making a matching jumper I'm getting a bit hot in this jumper actually so far I've got oh they're on the floor the body panels for the jumper so front and back I've 
woven in the majority of the ends as well and it's using the same yarn it's the um, double knit from the pound shop and it's got this glitter acrylic in it I'm ripping that down to use it um, and I've started on the sleeves the sleeves are going to be all granny squares as well this is going to be head to toe granny squares I'm gonna it's a jumper like this only it's a smaller gauge so you've got more squares and it's slightly bigger as well I wanted it really oversized and then the sleeves are completely granny square whereas this is using single or double crochet they're going to be completely granny so I'm going to be all grannied up um, I am almost finished with that but I kind of hit a little bit of a slump with the grading of the jumper as so I've put it to one side but <sighs> I am ready to crack on with it and I'll tell you why soon. So that's the victory set. It's going to be a cropped boxy jumper like this one, only completely granny square, no cow neck, probably not going to put any ribbing on, ribbing on it either. Whew, getting warm. Um, and what else was I going to say? Oh, and it's got a matching skirt. The weather. I'm British, I have to tell you. The weather here has been a bit of a madness. We've had uh, 33 degree Celsius weather, which is 91 degrees Fahrenheit, because I checked it earlier, and that's not usual, that's not, that's not normal for the UK. And our houses aren't equipped with aircon or anything like that. We just have like electric fans that kind of blow just warm air everywhere. Um, and then we've had like, torrential rain, flash flooding across the UK and warnings of storms and right now it's really muggy, like humid, warm but then it's cloudy and the wind is really really pushing my garden around like if it, if it wants to just calm down and not damage anything that would be great, thank you um, and so I put this on and it, it's a little bit when the windows and doors are open there's a bit of air circulating it's fine when i've got the youtube the studio lights and everything's shut to try and hide the noise i'm a bit warm but we'll persevere so that's the british update on the weather for you i know you wanted to know all about that um so then that moves us on to don't have any finished objects i've got one more whip in my patterns. I don't actually think I'll release this for sale but I'm making it for myself and I'm not using a pattern. And that is this. Oh it's so bright! It's another two round granny square project. I'm making a cover for my Kindle. I love to read but I find that I buy books but I prefer to read on my Kindle and so I've kind of just made peace with the fact that as much as I love this, I'm just not really going to be adding to book books, physical books. My Kindle's where it where it's at. And I've had such an internal debate on that because the books look nice and they're pretty and I want people to come around and know I'm well read and blah blah blah. But I prefer my Kindle because it's lightweight, I can make the font really big. Um, I don't have the best of eyesight and so it's nice to be able to make the font really big and just give my eyes that break. There's no, I don't have to turn the light on because it's backlit. I don't have to put the light on in, in the house. Um, I don't have to get up and turn the light off, which means I can read when it's pitch black but still see. And I can have my entire collection in one Kindle, which I really, really prefer because no matter where you are, you've got all of your books. Rather than thinking, oh, I want to read like six books on my next week's holiday, what should I take with me? Yeah, okay, we're in the middle of Rona, so we're not going anywhere, but... So, to reignite my love for my Kindle, I started to make a cover, and it's a two round granny square cover, and it's going to be a pouch with um, like a fold over flap, and I'm going to line it with felt to make it extra cushy for my Kindle to protect the screen. And I did put it together in some stashed yellow that I had, and then, I was playing yarn chicken and I got to, I had like this much to do and run out. So I bought more yarn and this is one of them. So this is the 
sheep yays that's what I'm gonna go with if it's wrong correct me the sheep yays and this color is Brussels but I'm guessing maybe it's pronounced different and it doesn't mean Brussels sprout like it does to me because it's bright yellow um, so I'm putting that together and I've got the ends to tackle there's another row to put on after this rose finished um, weaving the end felt something to do the flap and then it's done so yeah had to take the jumper off because I was getting hot and shiny <laughs> Oof. which moves me on to whips And although this is one of my whips, it's also one of my patterns, but anyway, I always put it in the whip category. This is my Together blanket. I decided um, the day that I started working remotely from home because of coronavirus, I decided I was going to make a granny square a day. And I was just going to do it throughout the lockdown. Um, like I could see from other countries across the world that lockdown was going to be happening. Um, and so from the 18th of March 2020 I started working from home remotely um, and then lockdown in the UK was the 23rd of March and I decided to make a granny square every day so I'm making a five round granny square using a 4.5 mil hook and I'm using mainly it has been up to this point all stash yarn scraps and stash um, of my double knit yarn and I mainly use acrylic yarn as well and so I've I think I'm on day I think I want to say I'm into the hundredth day now but I need to double check um I think I've gone over 100 days now there's actually 94 squares on here so I've got about a week to catch up on um and I have added a square pretty much every day if I don't make it then I tend to pick the colours out to make um, at some point when I'm sat watching YouTube or whatever. I haven't watched any YouTube in quite a while. I've got a huge list of um, channels to catch up on. And also, one of my tribe stars, Shardine, has started her channel and I'll put it down below. It's um, another crochet channel so you can go and have a look. She also does cross stitch. I haven't actually watched yet, but I really want to. It's just I haven't I haven't been watching YouTube. I have more been listening to um, podcasts on Spotify, and um, I'm really thinking about downloading Audible again. But anyway, go check her out. Um, so as I was saying, a square every day. I've got a few to catch up on, but I kind of made the decision to wait for the new yarn. So. Yeah, I am really loving it. I've got quite a few ends to weave in as well. So at some point I will carve out a chunk of time and sit and weave all of those ends in. To be honest, because of the heatwave weather, it's been too warm to have this on me or even on a table to sit and work on it. I've wanted something much lighter. Um, and so the last week I've, I've not really been near it, other than to take photos with it. Um, and so originally, as I said, I was going to carry on during lockdown, but then it became apparent sort of end of April, mid-May, that coronavirus is here to stay, it's not going to go. And until there's a vaccination, our lives will be different. And so I've decided to make a square every day until a vaccine's found, social distancing is no longer necessary and that could be a long time or it could be just a couple more months, we don't know, we don't know how long this is all going to go on for. Um, but I've decided to make this square, this square, this blanket was originally seven squares in width, so a week was a width. I've now made it so that a fortnight, 14 days is the width um, and I'm going to, I think it's eight weeks in length and I'm going to continue until it's 16 weeks in length and then maybe at that point call this one finished and start another one if we're still in this situation. So it'll be ongoing but I might break it down into a couple of blankets or however many blankets need it needs to be. Um, if you've watched this before you've heard all this information but I 
do love this blanket, so I thought I'd tell you again. Um, and then also, I've enjoyed making, having like a daily project so much that I think it's something that I'd like to continue even once coronavirus is gone, hopefully gone, please go. Um, and so I know people make temperature blankets and things like that, but I'd like the idea of having an ongoing blanket because if this was a project, not a daily project, just a project, I would have rushed through and this would be done by now. Uh, I'm so all or nothing. Once I've made my mind up I'm doing something, it's going to be done hella fast until like I hit a snag or too many ends and then I'm like, <sighs> but generally hella fast. Um, and so because this is daily, it's really made me slow down, really enjoy watching it grow. And it's a project I can always go to, so it's always there, it's always waiting to be picked up. And I really like that, I find that really soothing. These projects that I'm working on, Victory, Promise, Revival, they will be done and released. And then I have this sort of gap in between where I'm like, what do I work on? But it's okay because this needs work every day. And I won't make a temperature blanket, but I'll, I'll think of some sort of premise to make a daily one, whether that's yearly or quarterly or monthly. Because um, if I did eight round squares, I could maybe do that for two months and have a generous blanket. Or maybe I could decide to do one for six months and do like five rounds or... Anyway, there's so many possibilities. So I like the thought of having a project to jump in on. Also, I just love granny square blankets and I want so many more. I only actually have two granny square blankets, but yeah, I love granny squares so much. So I'm gonna be making a lot, lot more. I want to make a blanket like this. So it's three rounds and joined in black. I originally had one and I took it apart. And so I want to do another one just using stash and then get some black yarn to join it all. So I might at some point start making batches of three round squares, weaving the ends. I'll probably do it on like a 4.5mm hook to give it quite a loose look. Yeah, so that's all of my whips. No it's not. That's all of my crocheted whips. I've got two knitting whips that I'm owning up to at the moment. One of them is my Aran cardigan. I've made no progress on that, partly because it's heavier yarn, also because I really have to focus when I'm doing it. And I've not really wanted to, which is a shame. I only need to do the sleeves and the fronts. Well, one and a bit sleeves and the fronts. So it is still in the pipeline, it will get done. I want that in my wardrobe. But I, I, I volunteered to test knit a project, which I haven't, I haven't test knitted anything before, I've test crocheted but not test knit. Um, and these are by Gina Making Art and on Instagram. And I saw them through getting married in a sweater. So Ray has an Instagram account and it's chronicling her um, journey, adventure, progress, knitting a her wedding dress. Mm -hmm. Now her wedding's been postponed because of coronavirus, um, so she's still working on the wedding dress but also works on other projects as well and she made a pair of knitted shorts and when I saw them I was like, I need them. Um, I'm always looking for ways that I can incorporate this into my day to day wardrobe and so a pair of knitted shorts is fabulous. It's just started raining. Um, and so she tagged the maker the designer and so I went to buy the pattern and found that she still needed a tester for my size so I offered to do it and she accepted so I am making a pair of shorts out of this color yarn <laughs> so proud I started these on Thursday and it's now Sunday and I've done one short leg and I've also taught myself to knit continental whilst doing it um so I'm really proud of how much I've done I'm using 
This is the balcony shorts and I'm using Drops Bell. And this is in shade 11, which was colour Old Pink. And this is um, double knit yarn, but it's 53% cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen, which makes it a just a perfect blend for the um, summer. So as you can see, it's really drapey. It's really light. Like compare that to double knit acrylic. You can see the drape in there, the way it's bouncing. Um, can you hear the rain? I don't have to water my garden today after all. And it's got quite a bit stretched to it. It's really, it is really cool to touch, to the touch, like quite cool. Um, and because it's cotton and linen, it's gonna be great in the summer. What I really like about this yarn is you can see that the cotton is a lighter dust dusky pink and then the linen is a slightly brighter pink and so let me show you in the rest of this it gives it this really great effect So I am knitting these as a test, they are bottom up, so you do it from the leg up, um, you do both of the legs and then you, then you seam them together and then you pick up stitches to knit the waistband and then you put elastic in the waistband. And I decided to go with pink, um, this old dusky pink. I think it really complements my skin tone, especially now that I have such a strong tan. Um, and then I just think it will go with a lot of my summer out outfits, summer wardrobe, especially as I want to add some handmade pieces, sewn pieces. Um, so just simple tops in white or mustard will go really well. And even with black, um, and a couple of prints as well, like floral prints will go really well. So that's my shorts. I'm really pleased because when I put it together like that, you can see that it, it it's a short, it's a leg. Um, and so this morning I actually bound that off and I'm ready to cast on the second one. Um, and I started them on Thursday and I've had a lot going on with revival, um, answering questions, which I'm more than happy to do, not complaining, um, setting up the group, this, that, the other, and I've just dipped in and out of that since Thursday evening when my yarn arrived, and yeah, loving it. It's really nice because it's just knit and pearl. I could just zoom through, and then I'm like, oh, just get this repeat done, or just do, and before you know it, you've you've done a whole leg. Um, I'm looking forward to showing you those finished. So that is all of my whips, my patterns, which leads us on to acquisitions and my garden. I'm going to do an entire vlog on this yarn because there's so much of it. Um, and so I've decided to split it down into two. I have so much yarn to show you. I did two yarn orders and it's the first order of 2020. So I've not had any new yarn throughout 2020. I'm pretty sure. Like, cause I said my word for this year is enough. And so I have enough yarn. And so I was only going to allow myself to buy yarn to complete projects. And so a lot of that yarn is to go into this blanket because a lot of my colors were disappearing. The pinks, yellows, greens, um, and I wanted the blanket to look continuous all the way over and not sort of change colour as it went along because I no longer had the greens, pinks, yellows to go in. And then I also bought last minute this yarn to make the shorts. And this yarn is so cheap, it's £1.10 a ball. I bought this from Purple Sheep Yarns, I put it on the screen, um, and they dispatched it and I had it within two days of ordering it. Perfect. I think I ordered it like, was it Wednesday night? And had it by Friday. Or did 
did I order it Tuesday, had it by Thursday, cast on Thursday. Um, and so because it was so cheap, I decided to get enough to make two pairs and then that put me quite close to the amount where you get free postage. So I was like, I'll just buy more. So I've spent bang on £70 to the penny on yarn. I spent £49.75 on one shop and £25.15 at the other. Bang on. So I spent 75, 75 bang on. Which I'm really, really pleased about for over six months of not having any brand new yarn. I've bought 50 balls of double knit and however many balls of cotton blends. And I've got designs in mind for the cotton granny square summer designs. My tummy's grumbling, which means I should hurry up and go eat. Okay, so that leads me on to my garden because I'm going to release the yarn vlog next week for you. It leads me on to my garden. Um, I've got loads of footage to the point where that might end up being a separate vlog as well. I'm now getting like a daily harvest um, of courgette and peas, which is amazing. I love it. It tastes so good. And then um, I'm also, my sweet corn's really coming on. I've got tomato plants gifted by my dad, thanks dad, that hopefully they'll shoot up. Cucumber plants are coming on really well. The sweet peas flowers coming on really well. My sunflowers are huge. My tummy's grumbling. Um, it's because I thought about my garden and all the great food and then my strawberries are coming on really well um, I've had another like reshuffle out there I planted up some sweet corn plants I had a reshuffle it looks great and I am love love loving every moment in my garden the garden's kind of enjoying the heat and then we're getting quite a lot of rain as well so it's really thriving at the moment everything's really coming up I need to cut my grass, I know that much. Um, what else? I planted some, so my focus is to have my Christmas dinner. That sounds wrong. My focus is to have all of my vegetables for my Christmas dinner from the garden. So we are going to be growing, are growing broccoli, carrots, parsnips, potatoes, Brussels sprouts. Do I say parsnips? And cabbage so basically a whole plate of veg for my Christmas dinner um, which is kind of cool because I am I am actually slipping into being vegan again just because I've got so much produce from my garden that I want to eat which is great um, so having an all, all vegetable <laughs> Christmas dinner will be fine <laughs> um, I planted sowed, sown the seeds for Brussels sprouts, cabbage and something else. Brussels sprouts, cabbage, what was the other thing? Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Ah, oh, that's bothering me. And something else. But I've sown those. Broccoli's already started, carrots already started, parsnips already started, we've got potatoes, and we're going to plant another lot of potatoes to have a later harvest. So, whew, so excited. So I spend quite a bit of time sat out in my garden, just crocheting, watching the plants grow. <laughs> and I can't recommend it enough. And then you get to eat the produce after, which it tastes so good. So, so good. Like the peas... Fresh peas are so sweet and delicious. It's something that everybody needs to try in their lifetime. The courgette tasted, all I can say is it tasted earthy. Earthy, like it tasted like garden. It tasted fresh and juicy and wow. Um, and I can't see us going back to buying these vegetables from the supermarket anymore. But I think we'll just be growing them forevermore and I hope we do. So, 
that's everything. If you want to see the garden, we've started our own Instagram page at Brew Farm, B R O O, which is Brad and Boo. That's our team name, um, and you can see updates on there. Brad's really artistic with his photography, so it's worth a follow just for that. And then, I think that's everything. My patterns, my whips, my yarn, everything. So I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I hope June has been good to you. We are now going to go into July. I'm just going to say, I feel like I'm making public public announcements, public well-being announcements, but tribe, just because countries are reopening, just because things are going back to normal, doesn't mean that the virus is gone. It's not gone. Things are reopening because profits are put before people. So we need to make the economy continue to run. People need, we need money coming in. I get all of that, but just stay safe. Make sure you're keeping your distance, make sure you're washing your hands, wear a face mask, stop the spread as much as you can and take care of yourself and your loved ones and make sure you eat so your tummy doesn't rumble all the time. I just can't stress it enough, like, use your own common sense. Don't be like the countless people crammed on Bournemouth Beach last week of queuing up for shops. We need to support the economy but we also need to take care of our health. And as for all those people posting about being back to normal, I don't want that normal. Nuh uh. I miss aspects, don't get me wrong. But I don't want the consumerism and the capitalism and the racism and the ableism and all of that. I want a community where everybody is safe, loved, well looked after, we all thrive, and people are put before profits. And on that note, I'm going to go and I'm going to say take care of you, take care of others, and I'll see you soon.